Thor News presents. All right, this is a two-part Thor News series called QE2 and the Near-Earth Object Giant Asteroid Swarm. Part one. In the first part, you're watching now. What we're going to be discussing here in this here video. I, I said here twice. That was a mistake. Shit. Now I've done it three times. Crap. I'm a horrible announcer. Giant Asteroid QE 1998, which they found in 1998. And then in the second part, we will discuss the seven other asteroids that are larger than a mile that will be near Earth objects in the next two months. All right, with that in mind, let's get, get to QE2. And if you like it, part two comes out. You can check that one out as well. All right, awesome. Well, hello there, my doom junkies, my celestial physics aficionados, and ladies. We have come together because we love asteroids. And I don't know if you heard, but there's a big one on our way. She is called QE2. QE2. And not QE2 as in quantitative easing 2 with Ben Bernanke. If you really want doom, you should look in the Federal Reserve and our economic and fiscal policy. That's probably where the real doom is, kids. Ha ha ha. But I digress. In either way, they're on QE forever now. QE2. No, not Queen Elizabeth 2. Ship, which is big. Man, Queen Elizabeth was hot, huh? Yeah, baby. QE2, the asteroid, is way bigger. It's nine times the length of the QE2 ship, the Queen Elizabeth. Asteroid 1998 QE2, at its closest pass, will be 15.2 lunar distances from the Earth, or 3.6 miles. It in itself, it is 1.7 miles across, or 2.1 kilometers. One mile equals 1.6 kilometers. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I had to Google it. I mean, I learned it before, but that is just a piece of data I keep forgetting. It was discovered August 19th, 1998. It will pass by Earth at the closest at 9.59, May 31st, UK time. I think they named it QE2 because they have a good sense of humor and a Nostradamusian look into the future. We haven't gotten a good look at it yet, so most of the data you will be seeing on asteroids is from other asteroids because we've only got like tiny like you saw that one photo of a tiny itty bitty pixel yeah we don't have many images of it yet so we haven't got a good glance at its shape uh asteroids usually have a, a funny odd weird shape i'm even pretty sure that qe2 isn't gonna hit her it doesn't look like it's gonna hit us i don't know if the 4x class solar flare winds change and move around space rocks or not but i'm definitely thinking this one is not gonna hit us but with all these giant rocks coming in i would imagine that we'll get hit by a lot of the smaller stuff maybe some medium stuff and it's a lot of thing about angles and trajectories and where meteors hit, but I don't think QE2 is going to hit. And NASA is 100% sure it's not going to hit. While NASA overall does a good job, we'll give NASA and all the official astronomers an incomplete grade for saying like, oh yeah, on this date, DA-14 will not hit. Where? I think they're right. DA-14 did not hit. They didn't see the one that did hit. So one that did hit so we never know they don't know we don't know there's so much stuff out there yeah i mean the da-14 or the non the one in russia and blew out tons of windows scared people had video everywhere so we gotta count that as a miss as we saw with da-14 the well mapped stuff i'm pretty sure they've got their orbits down i've looked at most of the orbital codes and they're all at ones and zeros which means barring a total disaster or divine intervention they've got the orbits of those of those asteroid mapped down to the t so that's good. But as we learned with DA-14 and the unnamed asteroid entered the atmosphere, turning it into a meteor, and then exploded over Russia into little pieces, turning into meteorite pieces, that I guess in this case it's not the big one we should worry about. It's all the other little stuff that you can't see. Um, Because, you know, there's trillions of space rocks out there, and uh, we can't really expect catch them all or see them all. Asteroids are not the Pokemon. Pokemon? Pokemeister. Sorry, I was a World of Warcraft geek. I don't know. Pokemon? I don't know how to pronounce it. So, you know, we're just going to take a look and see, you know, this could cause an uptake. Little meteors, medium-sized meteors but I think definitely people should be aware now there are quite a few theories out there I guess since they're on the internet they are conspiracies there are conspiracies that larger asteroids cause earthquakes on earth and since we don't really know what causes earthquakes on earth no one can either say 100% yes or 100% no to that theory I don't think anywho gravity gravity is a tricky thing to figure out 100% anywho as we were discussing. So everything around the sun, I think, is either getting slowly being pulled in towards the sun or is drifting away from the sun. Gotta be one or the other. I, you know, these things can't stay locked in place forever. Sometimes it seems like the sun is pulling in all the dust and the matter and the comets and everything. And then from that, it has more material to grow. All right, then. Yeah, these asteroids are always fascinating. And I always wonder about, like, but what happens when space rock bump into other space rock? Doesn't make those space rock bump into other other space rocks just like pool balls on a pool table you know what i'm saying and so you know there's always a bit of the known unknown in this situation all right yes yeah that's true man okie dokie yeah okay so we're gonna take a look at this stuff 1998 was a pretty great year 
the 90s overall were pretty wonderful. The world was a much different place before cell phones and the internet and 24 hour media and 500 cable channels. Like, you didn't hear men complain. People use the word hate like 95% less than they do now. Guys would get into fist fights and then forget about it the next day. It's a pretty awesome time. You had like the whole Pearl Jam, Seattle sound exploding, rebelling against the Reagan generation parent. Good times, man. Good times. But, you know, I guess Nostradamus was right when he said in 1999, terror would come from the sky and Mars would rain happily ever after. Damn it. Anyway, anywho, I digress back to the asteroids which we love so much. Back off, buddy. I'm a pseudo-scientist. I don't have to know what the words mean. I just have to use them. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, I'm just kidding. Emulate? Is that better? Recreate? Uh, emulate? Carbon copy? Copy copy? Copy that. Anyway. One cool thing I saw in an article was that nobody can say where, with any certainty, it came from. One clue to its origins, however, is that its surface is said to be covered with a sticky black residue, suggesting it might have been a comet and gotten close to the sun. Or QE2 was in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter originally and got knocked out by what? Nobody knows. Its diameter is nine times the length of the Queen Elizabeth II ship, or one ten thousandth the size of all the cash printed out by the Federal Reserve during quantitative easing two, if you account for fractional reserve banking times nine times 36, which is supposed to be the legal limit for leveraging times the unknown leveraging limit. Okay, QE2 forever, babies. Okay, well, it's time to go. And go-karts, spaceships, rockets. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Well, that's not true. You can hit replay if you want to. Well, stay tuned and be on the lookout for part two when we discuss the giant asteroid swarm that is coming over the next two months. Thanks a lot. Awesome. It might even be out tomorrow. Once again, this got too big somehow. And I had to split it in two. Did you really stay to the end? You are so faithful and loyal. Thank you. You rock. Kick ass. Okay, later. Peace out.